Hi, and welcome back to the second hour of Focal Point on Free for All Friday. Brian Fisher is my name. Great to have you in the conversation. We want to go to the phones. Uh, uh, Jeff, you and I were talking before we take that first call. You and I were talking over the break about, you know, I brought the story yesterday that, that the Al-Qaeda there, these militants, they ripped off a bank for four hundred and. $29 million on their way through uh, Mosul, and you made an interesting observation. Well, yeah, they've established a, a strict code of, of Sharia law on uh, on everybody else. Um, but doesn't that mean that there would be a lot of al- a lot of uh, terrorists right now that should be missing a hand? Yeah, I mean, uh, Sharia law, that's what they do to thieves. They cut their yeah. hands off. By the statement of their own law, they yeah, should that's be. that's Sharia law. So they 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 ought to have no hands going into uh, uh, Baghdad. So not the only place American politics, not the only place where you see hypocrisy. All right, Jeff, thanks for that. Number to call: triple eight five eight nine eight eight four zero eight 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 five eight nine eight eight four zero. Number to call. We'll take calls over the course of this hour. Let's go to John Lotte, Florida. John, welcome. What's on your mind? Hey, hey, John. Hi. Thank you. Thank Jesus for you taking my call. You're welcome. In, but... in the spirit world, Iraq is the devil's seat and headquarters. And there he sends out his demons all over the world. Just like Israel is where Jesus dwells in the spirit world. Now, it, in the Revelation, it calls it Mystery Babylon, Mystery of Iniquity. And. And they've turned the Christian religion into a harlot religion by um, by getting people to marry over and over again and committing adultery. And that's just terrible. Mm-hmm. All right, John. Well, listen, and, and you're you're thinking specifically of the implications for the country of Iraq. That if you look at this from a standpoint of spiritual warfare, you know you've got statements, letters in the. Book of Revelation, for instance, about certain cities being a seat of Satan, a place where 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 Satan, whether the people know it or not, where he's honored, where he's exalted, where he is worshipped, and that may be what you have going on uh, in the country of Iraq right now. All right, John, listen, thank you. Let's go to John in Columbus, uh, Ohio. Again, that number is triple eight five eight nine eight eight four zero. If you'd like to call and join the conversation, eight 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 five eight nine eight eight four zero is uh, the uh, number to call. You know, and again, uh, now I want to go back to this thing that Kevin Williamson said uh, because I think, I think he's right about this. I mean, I just, I just do not see another alternative but quarantine. Um, and again, we have to be careful here because most Muslims do not want to kill us. I say that every time we talk about this. I know that. I understand that. But time after time, uh, there's a story about a that jihadist, that American jihadist, that blew himself up in Syria. So as the first American Muslim that we know of that went to Syria, the battlefield in Syria, and blew himself up for Allah. He was from America. He grew up in Vero Beach, Florida. And I read stories about him. Grew up in a quiet, middle-class neighborhood. Loved to play basketball. Was the nicest guy you'd ever want to meet. And then he drove a truck with 16 tons of explosives or whatever into some restaurant or something and blew it up and killed a whole bunch of innocent people, uh, including himself. You know, and, and so the point is you just, you just don't know. And we have a lot of American citizens that we know of, American Muslims, that are over in Syria right now. They're in Syria right now. And some of them have already come back. And our Homeland Security says we don't know where they are. We've got no idea. We've lost track of them. But they go to Syria, they become battle-hardened. You have maybe 500 people from Muslims from Great Britain that are in Syria. You've got hundreds from the country of France that are in Syria. One of them, you remember, came back from France, and he went into that Jewish museum and, and calmly killed four people in cold blood. He'd just come back from Syria. He was a citizen of France, had the passport, the travel papers, uh, the whole nine yards. And the problem is we just don't know. It, we, we just don't know. And so I think Kevin Williamson's point is good. I think all you can do is we have to, I mean, his word for it is to, um, this is his phrase, immigration from the Middle East to the United States should be radically curtailed. 
I agree. Only instead of saying radically curtailed, I would just say it needs to be stopped. It needs to be suspended. I believe the only people, for instance, from Iraq that we should admit into the United States are Christians who are fleeing for their lives. Remember when you had this problem, when we went into Iraq in the first place, uh, there were well over a million Christians in the country of Iraq. Half of them left because of the violence. Now it's less than that, down to a couple hundred thousand. And when the Christians in Baghdad would flee for safety, remember Saddam protected the church for a time because he needed Christians. They were the only people he could trust to run his government. They were the only people who wouldn't rob him blind. And so he protected the church in Baghdad to some degree because he needed them to help him run his government. Uh, but when Saddam went down, that protection went down. We didn't provide him any protection. We didn't help the Christians there one iota. This is even under President Bush. They were just cannon fodder for Muslims after Saddam fell. And so they would flee to Mosul. That's one of the places they would go. A lot of Christian families went to Mosul. Well, that place just fell to Al-Qaeda. And Al-Qaeda went through there, and they burned churches, and they killed Christians. Uh, some of those Christians uh, would flee to Syria. That's another place that they went. They went from Baghdad to Syria. Well, you can't go to Syria now because Al-Qaeda is running that place, and they're burning churches and, and killing Christians and picking them off with snipers and the whole thing. So these Christians need a place to go, and I believe we ought to make the United States a sanctuary from any Christian in a Muslim country who is in fear of his life because they have good reasons for that fear. Let's grab one call before the uh, break. Let's go to John in Columbus, Ohio. John, welcome. What's on your mind? Hey, Brian. I listen to you all the time. I, I turn my church on to you, and I, and I, like I said, I love your show. Thank you very I much. I have an interesting thought. You know, yes, sir. If, uh, if Obama's into uh, you know, swapping prisoners for prisoner, and Hillary agrees with that and everything, why don't we go ahead and and give them back all of the uh, illegal Mexicans that are up here in our prisons for the soldiers down there in Mexico. I think that'll be a, that'll be a fair swap. They can have them all back as far as I'm concerned. Well, you know, and that's a terrific idea. I mean, that would be the same kind of deal. We had those guys in Guantanamo Bay because they were bad guys. And we've got these criminal illegal aliens in our prisons because they're bad guys. And they're from Mexico. And the guys in Guantanamo Bay, they were from Afghanistan. So we took the bad guys... And we sent them back to their home country where we exchanged them for an American who was in detention. Well, you know, and I think your point is exactly right. We ought to, we ought to, the same thing ought to happen here. Now, the Mexicans, government would never go for it because they don't want those guys back any more than we want them here. They don't want rapists and murderers and homicidal maniacs back in their country. They're glad that they're our problem now. But we ought to send them back. We ought to make an exchange. Let's... Release uh, Sergeant Tom Aresi or Tom Aresi, however you say his last name. Let's release him from the Mexican prison in exchange. You can pick the worst criminal. We'll send you all 36,000. We'll round them back up and we'll swap you 36,000 for our one Marine. Focal Point AFR Talk. We'll be back, back in two.